सोलर then of course renewable energy is one of them and then we have tried to connect with various women speakers who have you know shown how renewable energy can be used or waste management can be used to empower women so these are few lectures of three sectors which we have covered over the past few months today we want to deliberate on a very important topic plastic waste management plastic waste management you know has become very important especially during the because of the pandemic where we have generated more plastic you know because more packaging more you know deliveries online deliveries have caused that there should be more packaging material used and in fact if you see plastic waste it constitutes more than 8% of the solid waste which we generate every day so there is a lot of concern that how we should reduce this plastic how we should you know convert it into a sustainable product which we, which can be recycled which can be reused government of india has also come up with the notification you know plastic waste management rules 2021 where they said that the single use plastic items should be banned which which have low utility they have high littering potential so and i i i'm i i know you must be knowing that honorable prime minister also has been focusing again and again that plastic waste has to be reduced it has to be reused it has to be recycled so with this i would like to introduce and welcome our speaker of today mr ashish jain you know he is the founder and director of indian pollution control association and he will be delivering a talk on how sustainable supply chain of plastic waste can be made you know how plastic waste can be created into sustainable products he has 20 years of experience in solid waste management air pollution and environment education and he has authored many books research papers articles he is also running a plastic recycling facility and encouraging youngsters to become entrepreneurs in this field you know in the field of solid waste management through his collaboration with educational institutions he is a pioneer in conceiving and execution of epr extended producers responsibility this is the need of the day those who produce they have to look at how it has it has to be how the waste has to be taken back and it has to be recycled and put into the supply chain so his expertise lies in developing waste uh, a supply chain of waste and his professional work is in introducing new technologies promotion of recycling and exploration exploring sustainable solutions for a healthy society so the environment has to be healthy the society has to be healthy so that we do not get problems which are coming nowadays every day you know this month is so hot they said that it is as hot as it is may as it, it used to be in may so this is all because of the environmental problems which we are you know we are facing and we have to do every effort to reduce it mr jain is also members of various committees on solid waste management on plastic waste management and i i feel that his expertise his knowledge his experience will be a big learning for us today so once again i welcome you mr jain and i request you to take the screen and guide us <coughs> on how we can move forward in this direction i just wanted to add that skill council also has identified plastic waste management as one of the areas and we are trying to interact <coughs> with recyclers with the distinct for operations and today i feel that our interaction with mr jain will help us move further in this direction thank you very much and welcome mr jain thank you uh, thank you dr damija and uh, thank you very much for setting up the agenda and uh, introducing uh, myself uh, to the uh, to the audience and uh, you you already uh, said and well said that uh, plastic uh, management is a need of an hour as our prime minister also 
talk about plastic waste management uh, from the uh, red fort uh, which we are seeing on the screen so it's become a very uh, very important uh, topic of discussion or actually uh, uh, subject of executions and need uh, everyone uh, uh, engagement so i would like to thank the skill council for green jobs skill india for inviting me to talk on such a, a important uh, subject uh, uh, to celebrate azadi ka amrit mahotsav so <clears throat> as dr dhamija uh, mentioned uh, plastic waste management is very important subject and uh, 8% of plastic uh, is getting dumped or disposed at a, a landfill site or or at the dump yard uh, dump yard site of the city so uh, there are lot of studies uh, carried by various reputed organizations like cbcb neeri uh, which uh, which gives some characterization of the waste and as per their study uh, we generate uh, or our waste constitute 8% of uh, the plastic waste so this is studies is actually happened at the dump yard site or landfill site uh, which give a uh, uh, representation of waste at the dump yard so actual uh, plastic constitution of waste is uh, is actually higher than what we we see in the reports so actual plastic uh, constitution is around 20 to 30% because that is the constitution we generate at the household level or at the source of waste generation and when uh, this 20 to 30% uh, so maximum 16% approximately 16% of uh, plastic waste is get recovered uh, by the waste pickers or the uh, or, or various stakeholders and they supply this to uh, the uh, recyclers or, or the uh, or the end user so we will talk uh, on this uh, in my presentation how this supply chain happened and what are the key component in establishing this supply chain so uh, my my brief introduction has all been given by dr damija so i come directly to the uh, to the subject plastics so we we all uh, very well understand and know what is plastics so just to set up the agenda of my talk i would like to give a small definition of plastics so plastics are basically a petroleum products we we are seeing various petroleum products uh, in a uh, in our rounds Uh, like petrol diesel kerosene coal tar so plastic is also one of the end product of petroleum it's a long chain of uh, hydrocarbons but the problem with the plastic is non biodegradable <coughs> and because of that sir, it become curse plastic was invented uh, approx uh, in uh, 1950 the first plus the first plastic uh, product uh, came into existed in 1951 and uh, uh, the inventor of plastic got the nobel prize for such a beautiful invention and uh, still plastic can be considered as a beautiful or uh, the very innovative uh, products because it has lot of uh, uh, good characteristics and uh, it can be a substitute of various uh, renewable or non renewable uh, material it uh, plastic replaces metal plastic replaces uh, wood plastic replaces paper Uh, because of its various uh, uh, various uh, uh, properties chemical physical properties the only problem with plastic it it's uh, non biodegradable in nature means plastic will remain on earth for thousands of years if we do not collect it or we do not recycle or treat it <coughs> so these are some uh, uh, advantages of plastic uh, and because of these advantages plastic can be considered as the best uh, uh, material or element on the earth it has excellent durability it has resistance to chemical and water and uh, because of this uh, it uh, it used uh, as a packaging material for various uh, food items so if we analyze its importance uh, we, we we can say that uh, fmcg industry won't uh, won't be able to survive without plastic packaging because uh, because of uh, uh, this plastic packaging they can pack their food they can preserve their food for 6 months 1 year 3 years they can transport their uh, food or beverages or water to the uh, remote area or uh, or to the environment where life is very uh, very tough like uh, hilly areas so uh, the army people in hill areas can enjoy the same food uh, as uh, we are enjoying in the plains they they are also getting supply of milk curds beverages because of uh, uh, plastic packaging plastic is very lighter in weight as compared to the uh, other material 
So we can save a lot of logistic cost in transporting material from one place to another place. It has resistance to corrosion. Uh, it also provide hygiene uh, in the uh, packaging because uh, it uh, cut uh, the food material or packed material from the outside world. So it remain uh, non-contaminated and the, the consumer can receive very pure and healthy, healthy foods. It has a low electrical and thermal conductivity. So uh, we can use plastic in any electrical gadgets and uh, we can see <coughs> all our uh, electrical equipment and gadgets uh, have good uh, proportion of plastic. It can be easily molded into uh, <coughs> any shapes uh, or complex shapes. So all products around us. So if you analyze your uh, lifestyle or, uh, or the products uh, around you, you will find uh, plastic is available in each and every kind of products. Your mobile, your laptop, your chair, your table, means anything you name, your pen, um, everything uh, around us uh, having uh, plastic in any, I mean, in, in small or major co uh, composition. We can give any color to the plastics uh, through pigments and uh, it's relatively inexpensive to produce or the, to use. So these are some uh, uh, good uh, plastics and that's why it's very difficult to uh, replace plastics uh, from any other material and that's why it's become a challenge also. And then said uh, uh, this uh, uh, Ministry of Environment and uh, Forest has brought the notification uh, in uh, August 2021. And the first time they have defined single-use plastic. Uh, single-use plastic, and they have also proposed ban of uh, such a few single-use plastic items by uh, June 2022. So uh, after June 22, it's a uh, blanket ban on uh, 19 categories of uh, single-use plastic. Single-use plastic uh, are those plastic which can be used only once before disposing at the uh, dustbin. Now, dust bin may dispose karne se pehle kisi bhi plastic packaging ko sirf ek bar agar use kar sakte hai, toh wo, uh, that will be uh, considered as a single use plastic. Although uh, government has not banned all kind of single use plastic, they have uh, they they are planning to ban single use plastic in phase manner. So first in first phase they have identified a few non essential um, plastic uh, packaging. Uh, without without them, uh, means uh, there will be very less or no impact on our lifestyle. So these uh, items are like uh, earbuds, uh, plastic used in earbuds, plastic used in flags, plastic used in uh, uh, balloons, plastic used in decorative items, or uh, the disposable plastic used in uh, cutleries like a spoon, knives, plates, cups, glasses. <laughs> so we can survive uh, without uh, these items. So these items will be banned after June 2022. And uh, this is a ban to uh, to uh, to all stakeholders. Earlier, this ban is different from the earlier bans on carry bags or earlier bans on different plastic items because we uh, those bans were limited to few states and those bans were limited to the retailers or the wholesalers of plastic. Now the proposed ban is sorry uh, to interrupt, sir. Uh, yeah. Sorry to interrupt, sir. Actually, your slides are not moving. Might be uh, yeah, yeah. I'm not moving advantages my slides. of plastics. Okay. Yeah, okay. yeah. I'm not moving you. my Thank slides. Sorry, sorry to interrupt. Yeah. Um, so I was talking about single-use plastic. This uh, ban, this proposed ban, is the different from the earlier ban because now this ban will impact the manufacturing. Uh, unit also so no manufacturer will be allowed to manufacture the ban item no retailer will be allowed to sell these uh, or consume these single-use plastic so we are going to uh, implement uh, this one very soon and uh, the the government including central government the state government and the ULBs are working and preparing their action plan how to implement this ban on the ground <coughs> so uh, uh, so uh, they, as, as per the CPCB Central Pollution Control Board, uh, to have better management of plastic in place or to have better recycling of uh, plastic in place, they have categorized plastic into seven categories. Uh, and these uh, seven categories are polyethylene terephthalate, PET, uh, high-density polyethylene LDPE, polyvinyl chloride PVC, low-density polyethylene LDPE, polypropylene, polystyrene, and multi-layer packaging. 
so <laughs> broadly plastics are available in these seven categories and uh, it is very easy to recognize these uh, uh, these seven categories so whatever plastic we are using in in our daily lives uh, it basically represent all these seven categories and uh, uh, to to identify which kind of plastic we are using uh, the uh, the rule says the producers or the brand owner should emboss or should print the uh, category number on the plastic packaging so if you uh, if you can notice your uh, uh, your water bottle or your beverages bottle which is made up of pet it it is having uh, this uh, uh, kind of logo on the packaging recycling logo with number 1 so if you see any plastic with number 1 uh, logo it means it is a pet if you find any plastic packaging with two number logo that represent sdp if you find any uh, plastic with the three number logo it represent uh, uh, pvc and if you find any logo with the uh, uh, number 4 logo it represent ldp five number represent polypropylene and six number is uh, polystyrene and seven number is uh, is the non recyclable uh, plastic packaging or multi layer packaging <coughs> and uh, so on so why, why this number is important this number is important to segregate material and to recycle or channelize the segregate uh, plastic material to the respective recycling industry we need to understand the composition or the physical properties or chemical properties of each categories or uh, each category of plastic is different and the recycling mechanism of for recycling uh, different uh, plastic is different uh, suppose uh, if we supply pad bottle to the sdp recycling unit so it won't get recycled because sdp uh, recycling unit is having specific technology or specific infrastructure to recycle only sdp uh, plastic they won't be able to recycle pet or vice versa pet recycling industry cannot recycle sdp ldp pp or any other kind of material so this labeling uh, help us uh, the consumers to segregate plastic into a uh, different category the labeling <coughs> help uh, the waste collector to identify different plastic the labeling help the scrap dealers or aggregator to uh, supply respective waste categories to the respective recyclers although we we also find some non compliance in labeling many producers um, many brand owners or many users do not print uh, plastic category to just uh, save cost or maybe they are not aware about uh, uh, such uh, uh, labeling rules available and it's very important to adhere with their rules so now government is planning or this platform is also a kind of awareness program through which we are spreading knowledge or information about the rules and regulation which is important to uh, to establish a sustainable supply chain the sustainable uh, supply chain of plastic waste uh, is a start from the source of waste generation the consumer should be well aware about its role and responsibility and uh, it is start with the source aggregation so without source aggregation we cannot imagine any um, uh, sustainable uh, practice of waste management so why plastic waste management or sustainable plastic waste management is important because uh, we we all are aware about the problem uh, or pollution caused by plastic the plastic now reach to the oceans so now plastic waste reaching to the water bodies which is very uh, very um, a serious issue or a matter of concern nowadays uh there are some studies which talk, which says that about 3 metric tons of plastic is estimated to be entering to oceans every 15 second and there are certain studies who said uh, that uh, by 2050 if we uh, if we consume plastic at the similar rate uh, which, uh, which we are consuming nowadays and uh, we continue disposing in the similar fashion by 2050 the weight of plastic in ocean will be three times the weight of fish which is very alarming because we cannot disturb the ecosystem of ocean so we cannot disturb we are not supposed to disturb we are not allowed to disturb the ecosystem of uh, water bodies especially oceans because the entire environment or uh, is uh, balanced uh, by the oceans the 80% of oxygen come from the oceans uh, the ocean is also provide foods to the to the human 
through fish and various uh, aquatic animals. So by our um, by our uh, mismanagement of uh, plastic, the uh, the aquatic animals are getting disturbed. Uh, their life is also getting hurt, and not only ocean, uh, the aquatic animals, animals on the animals and birds on the land is also getting disturbed by our uh, uh, littering habit of plastics. So. Uh, like this uh, over 1 lakh or, or even 10 lakh seabirds, 1 lakh marine mammals and 1,000 of turtles are killed by plastic every year. So this is very uh, serious uh, matters. And by reading this, we should uh, understand uh, why it is important to have civic sense while disposing of plastic or while consuming plastic. So through this slide, I would like to convey uh, my, my request to all of us, all of you who are listening this, uh, uh, presentation. Please stop littering of your plastic waste and start source segregation. So these two things uh, is the key of any sustainable supply chain of uh, any waste commodity. If we do source segregation, then we ensure that uh, there will be high yield of uh, high yield of uh, recycling. We ensure that uh, the segregated waste will reach to the uh, recycling uh, unit. We ensure that uh, there will be no cost uh, in uh, uh, no cost in recycling low cost of uh, uh, transportation and uh, very less contamination of waste uh, commodity while recycling and there will be less exposure of waste collector to many diseases so source segregation is very important and if we do not litter plastics if we do not litter any kind of waste uh, on the roadside or any open space uh, we ensure that all waste will go to its right destination. If you littered anything on the roadside, mind you, that litter waste will not get picked up by anybody. So no uh, organization or uh, institution having the capacity to collect, carry back, dispose on the roadside. If you dispose anything from the, from the running uh, vehicle, you just uh, open your window and dispose on the roadside. That uh, water bottle, that uh, carry bag, that uh, ice cream stick, that glass, that plate will remain on remain on the uh, ecosystem for hundred and thousand years because nobody will go there to collect it. The cost of collection is so high. So uh, the the cost of collection is too high, and that's why uh, those liter plastic or those liter waste item will not get collected. And we start blaming that plastic is not good for the environment or blah, blah, blah. So if we substitute anything with the plastic and if we do not uh, uh, change our behavior toward the waste management or we continue littering uh, the alternatives of plastic also. So those products will, uh, will also have the same problem. So please try to understand uh, do not litter because littering is very injurious to our environment. Uh, we won't be able to collect littered, uh, littered waste. Kindly dispose your waste into the dustbin only. Then it will be easy for the waste collector to collect it and then supply to the uh, recyclers or the cocoa sector. Now I would like to uh, tell you the uh, global scenario of, uh, of waste. So we are growing exponentially in terms of plastic uh, production and plastic consumption. It is started from 1950 and uh, we have data till 2015. So from 1950 to 2015, if you see the graph, it's growing exponentially. And by 2015, our total uh, plastic waste generation was 300 million tons. This is global pictures. And out of this 300 million tons, 40%, 36% um, uh, is consumed in packaging only. So our demand for plastic uh, has increased for packaging because in last two decades, our lifestyle has changed. Uh, now we are importing material from, uh, from other countries. Now we are importing material from our neighboring state also. And whenever we source material from the far away uh, country or far away state or uh, <coughs> then uh, definitely it will come uh, in some packaging and plastic is the best uh, thing available to us for packing any kind of material it protects uh, the goods which we buy uh, from many uh, many things now foods uh, uh, foods vegetables also uh, served by some companies and plastic packaging i don't know why 
and the won't, don't want to comment on this but this is the foolish thing we are doing packing apple uh, with the uh, with the plastic uh, sheet so if we compare our plastic consumption in some other industries except plastic packaging then uh, uh, the textile industry have 14% uh, uh, consumption uh, ma machinery like automobiles have only 1% transportation is having 7% and building construction is having 16%, electric and electronic uh, industries is having 4% share in plastic uh, uh, consumption. And if we uh, see the uh, proposition of uh, how much is getting recycled, how much is being uh, uh, landfilled, how much is incinerated, so only 14% of the total plastic collected uh, is going for the recycling, 40% uh, is going for the landfill, and 14% is getting incinerated. And the 32% is leak, leakage. 32% leakage means 32% uh, we could not track. It remain on the, uh, on the uh, ecosystem, like uh, on the railway track, bus stand, drains, river, oceans, uh, road sites, parks. 32% constitute that percentage, which is, which is very huge. So this 32% can be, uh, can be uh, channelized to the recycling industries. 40% uh, of landfill plastic can be uh, channelized to the recycling industry. So all of us should uh, give uh, give us an attempt to convert this 32% and 40% to the uh, to the recycling industry by uh, source aggregation and by no littering. <clears throat> So if we come to the uh, plastic waste scenario in India, so we are generating around 25,000 metric tons of plastic uh, every day. And uh, if we talk about per capita plastic waste generation, uh, it's come around 10 kg per capita per day, which is uh, which is far less if we compare to the developed country. But uh, uh, the concern here is we are growing uh, very fast. So this 10 kg per capita, it's now becoming because we don't have any official uh, data on this, but this 10 kg has become 13 kg per capita. And uh, considering the population or density of uh, of India, even if we increase by 1 kg or 2 kg, it will impact huge uh, to the existing infrastructure. Like uh, if we increase it by 1 kg or 2 kg, then we don't have capacity to collect that much plastic. We don't have capacity to store that much plastic and we don't have capacity to recycle that much plastic. So uh, please reduce your uh, plastic uh, waste generation rate by reusing it and by, um, by reducing your demand also. The collection rate or recycling rate for one category of plastic is good. Uh, so as I mentioned, there are seven categories of plastic available. But the most collected and most recycled plastic uh, category is PET. India is the second leading nation in the globe who collect maximum PET bottles and recycle maximum uh, PET bottles. Uh, whatever plastic we are uh, generating uh, or consuming, so 80% of uh, those plastics are recycled uh, in nature and remaining 20% can be co-processed uh, uh, in uh, cement kilns, in waste energy plant or uh, in road construction or to get uh, extract oil now come to the uh, the uh, waste management scenario how uh, the waste is being collected <coughs> or uh, transported to different uh, destination so we have two kind of uh, system in place one is organized sectors uh, which uh, basically represented by the urban local bodies nagar nigam gram panchayat who are who who are a pioneer or uh, um, organization and uh, carry the responsibility to collect waste from the source of a generation and transport to the uh, <coughs> landfill uh, or the dump yard so because we don't have any sanitary landfill so we call it dump yard so this uh, uh, this represent by the uh, municipalities or we call it as organized sectors so in this organized sectors, uh, the municipalities serve only collection and transportation. So there, there is very minimum recovery of waste uh, from collection to the uh, disposal. The other sector is represented by the unorganized sectors where people uh, provide their services to different stakeholders and uh, they drive their livelihood by 
segregating and by channelizing uh, se segregated waste to the recyclers or scrap dealers. So maximum area, the, so there are n number of people who, <coughs> who engage in these kind of practices. But this sector is very unorganized. They don't have uh, any certainty in their life. You you easily see these people, and uh, I mean, someone is coming to your household or someone is coming to your office to collect your waste. So those people are not part of any municipality. They they are working uh, at their own. They are working as an entrepreneur also. So they receive waste uh, from your dustbin. Then. As per their knowledge and skill, they segregate, uh, they take out the recyclable material, including plastic, glass, metal, paper, and they then they are connected with some waste uh, dealers or the scrap dealers. So they sell their uh, collected uh, waste material to these scrap dealers, and then the scrap dealer again uh, segregate uh, different uh, waste item based on its color, texture, uh, thickness. Um, and, the, and the category and then they supply to the uh, aggregator or suppliers and suppliers is connected with different recyclers and supplier is the one who supply quality segregated uh, waste material to the respective recyclers. So these uh, these two uh, system exist uh, in our India or in our country and uh, so both system needs uh, improvisation and both system can be improvised if the waste uh, generator us we uh, if we improve our civic sense if we give uh, segregated waste to the waste pickers then we would uh, easily segregate and uh, supply more plastic or more waste to the people so we should uh, like i would like to thank these people who are serving day and night to make our city clean and uh, a better place to live and because of these people we our linear economy is were behaving like a circular economy because these people collect waste from from our dustbin because these people segregate valuable uh, segregate valuable waste commodities uh, from our waste because these people supply uh, segregated waste to the recycler we are having circular economy and our industries are able to produce new products and uh, uh, contribute toward the uh, gdp create employment and save uh, various natural resources. As we know, uh, recycling save uh, uh, waters, chemicals, and electricity. If we produce same product with the virgin uh, material, so we will definitely consume more water, chemicals, and electricity. <clears throat> because we talked about all these uh, issues and concerns related to waste, so Ministry of Environment and Forest notified rules uh, in 2016, and uh, this uh, rules uh, has been amended five times. And uh, recently, on 16th uh, February 2022, we got the final uh, uh, another amendment. And now this uh, plastic waste management rule is known as Plastic Waste Management Amendment Rules 2022. Uh, in this rule, uh, the uh, special uh, speci uh, force has given to the um, EPR, Extended Producer Responsibility. Earlier, municipalities were the main uh, authority who was responsible to collect, transport, disposal, and develop mechanism uh, uh, for the waste management in their cities. Now, apart from municipalities, other stakeholders who are using plastic packaging to sell their products, who are producing plastic packaging, are also uh, responsible to develop a collection back mechanism for the equivalent quantity of plastic packaging introduced by them or through their products. Uh, into the Indian market. And uh, uh, glad to know that in last five years, many uh, such uh, brand owners and producers uh, come forward and uh, they, um, they, uh, they, they started developing the collection back uh, mechanism through various waste management agencies. And uh, approximately last year, approximately 25% of the uh, plastic packaging introduced uh, in last year was being collected by, by these brand owners and uh, producers. So I hope uh, more people or more uh, producers and brand owners will fulfill their EPL liability and uh, more plastic will get collected, more plastic will get recycled and plastic uh, will be considered as a, as a boom, not as a curse. So these are some challenges in plastic waste management. 
as a I'm again um, emphasizing that people attitude uh, need to be changed they 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 should feel responsible toward uh, segregating and uh, disposing their uh, plastic waste the major challenge is lack of source segregation and the municipality should provide door to door collection system uh, this is also another area of concern because there is no 100% source uh, collection people forced to uh, dispose their waste uh, in open area uh, lack of uh, knowledge on recycling properties of various waste commodities also uh, a gray area and uh, through this kind of uh, program so many organizations are now conducting program even the state authorities also conducting awareness program with different stakeholders to enhance the knowledge of uh, recycling properties of different waste materials so slowly slowly we are moving toward the perfectionism and uh, we are also <coughs> proposing a course on uh, entrepreneurship in solid waste management through that course we are enhancing knowledge of different stakeholders on different uh, business model of waste and um, um, uh, how to enhance the recycling rate of various uh, waste um, uh, through uh, our pm um mm, uh, i mean so many stakeholders are advised to create infrastructure to uh, to have efficient and effective waste management system in uh, in place and nowadays uh, many uh, many companies or many agencies are coming forward to uh, build a material recovery facility in different wards and the municipalities are also providing a space to uh, create such uh, infrastructures so uh, all the stakeholders are uh, identified their responsibility and identified their power also and the capacity also and uh, based on their capacity they are contributing toward uh, setting up the effective waste management system so like uh, municipality is providing a space uh, uh, the waste management agency uh, helping ulbs in uh, creating the material recovery facilities people are segregating recycler are investing money to scale up their uh, recycling uh, infrastructures and improving their technologies also <coughs> so this is how we are managing plastic waste plastic waste uh, can be managed uh, there there were some conventional methods to uh, manage plastic uh, incineration landfilling and recycling now we have lot of new technology like plasma pyrolysis now we can convert your plastic waste into oil we can use plastic in road construction uh, cement case is also uh, uh, consume non recyclable plastics and uh, and the recycling is again uh, available to us <clears throat> so this is the flow diagram how uh, waste from the consumer reach to the uh, recyclers so scrap dealers rag pickers play a very important role if they do not exist waste will not reach to the uh, right uh, right place and because of their role we would able to convert various uh, waste item into beautiful products we are having our own recycling facility in greater noida where we are using uh, multi layer plastic your nangin sachet your uh, uh, biscuit wrappers chocolate wrappers ice cream wrappers Uh, to make these beautiful uh, products this bench is made up of such uh, mlp waste this dustbin is also made up of uh, mlp waste we can convert pet bottle into t-shirt uh, jeans because uh, pet can be converted into yarn which can be converted into fabric and fabric can be utilized in making any any uh, products shoes can be made up of uh, tiles can be made up of plastic you can uh, granules uh, your plastic waste and those granules can be molded into different uh, products so there are number of uh, options available and number of technologies available to uh, recycle uh, plastic the only challenge with uh, recycling of plastic is getting the quality segregated plastic waste which can be possible through the active involvement of people who consume plastic or who dispose plastic so that's it uh, uh, from my side i would be happy to answer any question if you have thank you very much mr jain it was a very i would say enlightening uh, 
you know talk and i learned a lot we learned so many things there are two questions i could see in the chat box from mr tushar jain and the first he wanted to know whether ldp and ps they are recyclable yeah uh, ldp to ldp is 100% recyclable so there are lot of uh, units available it's in there not recyclable so i feel your what you have given is that it is recyclable na no? yeah yeah it is recyclable ldp mm-hmm. is recyclable uh, ps uh, there is no uh, approved technology uh, or a facility for ps very few te- few facilities in india are, are available uh, for the recycling of ps so mm-hmm. uh, ps may there is a challenge to recycle ps but technology is, uh, is available but the, the recyclers are not available there only few two three recyclers available who can recycle ps but ldp to is very very well well uh, very well established uh, uh, sector yeah so he wants to know more about the amendment 2022 in pwm and clarity on the epr targets and obligations yeah uh, amendment 2022 is about the recession process or epr target of uh, uh, plastic waste through the pvo producer importer brand owners uh, through this uh, amendment cpcb is asked to develop a online portal so earlier uh, cpcb was given uh, a registration certificate only to the multi state operational brand owner producers uh, they were not giving the registration certificate to recyclers or co processors through this amendment and this portal is active day before yesterday cpcb is uh, now having active portal for providing registration certificate to all kind of producers all kind of uh, brand owners importer also and to the plastic waste uh, processing facility including uh, recycling facility and uh, waste to energy road contractor and uh, cement kilns uh, are exempted from this uh, registration process and if we come to the epr target uh, so uh, the amendment has proposed a formula to calculate uh, your epr eligibility uh, for for example uh, if you are a brand owners so you can easily calculate your epr liability by calculating your last two years uh, plastic consumption post consumer plastic consumption and your last two years uh, plus uh, pre consumed plastic uh, consumption so whatever would be the uh, uh, a plus b a means post consumer and pre consumer plastic aapko uh, uska 70% will be your epr liability for the coming financial year so uh, in 2021 20, 22 financial year pbo need to do 25% of their total epl liability and coming financial year means 22 23 they have to do 70% and after that they have to do 100% so thank you and uh, i wanted to ask uh, you had shown a list of you know a cycle of stakeholders like involved in segregation and you know in of course disposal and you have also shown some numbering of the plastic <coughs> yes yes so these uh, the ones who collect are they uh, trained in this or do they have knowledge that how they have to segregate it in the, the people uh, people who collect or segregate plastics are uh, their their skill is uh, outstanding they mm-hmm. can uh, they can segregate plastic by touching it by uh, by crushing it through the sound through the texture through the thickness through the colors but uh, uh, but to make their process more easy labeling is uh, is uh, is a mandate practice so if uh, if someone having no knowledge how to segregate or identify plastic based on its color its smell or texture they can simply uh, refer to the number it is always there if you see your water bottle at the bottom of water bottle you will find number 1 mm. and if it is not there if it is not there Uh, as a consumer we should not uh, consume or uh, buy those kind of product because that should be considered as a environmentally non compliance product so we should discourage such kind of product you know that that's the segregators yeah. they are trained in this they know how to segregate they know the yeah 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 when we do our trainings we do the bins we teach them the green bin the yellow bin the red bin like we say this is a liquid yeah those uh, training is uh, good for the waste generator who generate waste at source yeah. but uh, for the waste collector we need separate training so we usually yeah. provide training to 
waste collectors. So more than twenty thousand waste workers are associated with us, and yeah. we we keep on training them, uh, or we do a lot of capacity building program with them. And through this training program, we educate how to segregate, how to identify, and uh, how to uh, sell your segregated waste to the scrap dealer. So we educate them on different market price so that uh, there should be no exploitation of these people, people poor people. So we are working uh, how to improve their uh, per capita income through this business. Yeah, I think Dr. Hota wants to ask something. Welcome, Dr. Hota. And we have uh, Dr. Sena also today. No, no, no. I'm not. I'm not asking. I'm just yeah, supplementing no, what um, uh, Dr. Jain says. You know about your discussion on the training. uh and the skilling part so that can be done you know like um, skill council scgj has been doing for the safai karmacharis so this can also be done a similar kind of things so we can develop that that's what i'm trying to supplement it yeah that would be very uh, great support to the people who are uh, doing a noble job for the country and for the society we can work out something as is it later yeah later on. yeah yes Uh, Dr. Damija, you are on mute. Yeah. What is the? Uh, this is by Arpish Sharma. He is with the Skill Council. What does the number in the triangle on plastic containers mean? Number. Yeah. Number represents the category. Like number one represents PET. Number two represents SDP. Number three represents okay. uh, PVC. Okay. Number okay. four represents LDP. And number mm -hmm. five represents polystyrene thermocol. Uh, number six uh, represents uh, uh sorry uh, ldp and okay. number 7 is uh, the um, mlp okay. so we have with us dr satena ceo skill council i would request him to kindly dr sir your comments yeah thank you very much uh, dr dhamija in fact uh, 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 mr jain thank you so much for such a beautiful presentation uh, in fact all of us we uh, those who are even educated would know a very little about uh, plastics and how do we really what kind of a contribution we can make uh, i really appreciate uh, your time uh, for, you, for for this mm. uh, uh, speech and uh, i would also like to take your permission that normally we record these uh, webinars and put it on our websites and other things so that people can have a look at it i hope uh, uh, you will have no no objection if it is kept no. for a while and uh, sort of uh, propagated for further education yes, i have definitely. two uh, two small uh, i will not say question uh, but uh, something um, we would need your help and suggestion you mentioned that you are running an entrepreneurship course yes sir uh, and uh, uh, this is something which is very very close to now uh, government activities Uh, yeah. we are planning a large number of entrepreneurship activities and uh, waste would be something where uh, we all would be extremely interested in running uh, certain training programs more so on, on the entrepreneurship uh, activity and what we can do as sector skill council um, as per our mandate that we can generate a, a entrepreneurship program or course whatever whatever you are doing taking help from that and get it approved by government so that whenever there is a training on entrepreneurship uh, the, the people who are going through this it can also have a sort of certification from government on uh, on the program so yes. it's not certification per se in my opinion it is something which we need to promote and propagate and we would like to uh, come together and take your help in in further um promoting this this kind of an activity so yeah. if if i am able to um, get a broad structure of what kind of a, uh, activities or what kind of a course where you have on entrepreneurship uh, then we will be able to come to come to you and then discuss with uh, with you and maybe try to develop a national level certification program on uh, waste uh, management uh, re recyclable or entrepreneur yeah and i will i will thing, yeah second thing which i found very uh, interesting is why not to create a training program or a course on how do we create 
uh, a material recovery facility if anybody would like to create a material recovery facility what all he is supposed to know how he would do and uh, uh, that can be another i see a course we have certain courses i would request sarvesh to send you uh, the qualifications of uh, waste management we have something on safai karmachari we have something on waste management we have something on bioenergy uh, agriculture waste so we would like to share all that with you uh, just for the sake of reference and maybe develop some more training programs which can be uh, we can we can only uh, supplement your your efforts your efforts are something which are outstanding frankly speaking but still if we it has to go many many fold then probably um, uh, some programs government programs have to be there where we can secure some csr funding also um, uh, so that these trainings can be uh, given at in different cities different places so uh, my my humble request to you would be uh, to help us to develop these courses or any other course you feel uh, which needs uh, Uh, typically as far as we knew uh, we knew that okay there is a plastic plastic uh, segregation is done they are converted into pellets and that's the end of it so we would like to know also from you uh, what what else can be done by uh, recycling different uh, variety of uh, uh, plastics so kuch uske around we would like to very uh, uh, very closely work with you and take your help in promoting what all you are doing to to a greater part of the country yeah so this is what my request would be and we will send so, you some information as what we are doing and maybe request if you can share with us your entrepreneurship program so that we can develop that with your help and take it to the national level uh, approvals and other things yeah so thank you sir uh, you uh, you already touched uh, what uh, means uh, what we are planning to do and uh, our intention is uh, very uh, similar to what you uh, just uh, said so the uh, because the india is generating huge volume of uh, waste and uh, we are very big country in terms of uh, our numbers and uh, the the issue of the problem of waste management cannot be solved by handful of organization only two three organization or 10 organization we need thousands of thousands of people who work in this sector as a more professional people uh, the currently waste management uh, subject is handled by the informal sector we need to be translated into formal sector and that's why we need uh, entrepreneurs so our certificate course on entrepreneurship uh, uh, will guide the people how to um form a company how what are the business opportunity what are the technology how can one convert a uh, problem into opportunity so we will uh, provide a thorough mentorship uh, to the to the applicant and we will also give practical exposure to the applicant if uh, he find any problem uh, after the course also uh, we will help them in setting up the plant we will help them set, i mean sir in whatever sense the, they uh, they need our support we will uh, provide because our vision is to pay people more professional in the waste management field so that uh, the problem of waste management can be solved in a very professional manner ethical manner and uh, environment friendly uh, approach so i would share my uh, course content with you and uh, would be uh, would in be fact, happy we are, we are fortunate that dr hota is with with us always and yeah. he keeps on guiding us on various things so um, it it would be a good idea to really develop this further uh, supplementing your efforts no match to the people who are who feel it strongly and do the work but whatever little we can contribute in the whole uh, whole uh, system any other area do you think that we should have more trainings or or uh, in, nowadays i see some of the um, uh, small collection centers जिनको जिनको वो लोग क्या एवरी Yeah. Now the municipalities are uh, closing all the dalaws, and they are converting those dalaws either into FSTS facility 
or MRF facility. What so is FSTS, that? FSTS yeah. facility means that has a compactor. So uh, material recovery facility is receiving two kind of waste. One is wet waste and segregate. And wet waste, you you know, it consists a lot of moisture into 80% of uh, uh, means wet waste having 80% moisture. And if we supply uh, that uh, highly moistured uh, uh, waste to the landfill, so we incur a lot of logistic cost. Uh, so uh, that's why now municipality is placing FSTS. They compact the entire uh, waste uh, and take out the moisture or leachate. So mm -hmm. uh, then your transportation cost will be uh, very minimum. Very minimum. So the, and uh, the decomposition process will also uh, become effective. So there will be less leachate production at the landfill site and uh, it can be converted into compost uh, very soon. It won't smell if we take out the moisture. So this is the very innovative approach uh, where municipalities are doing and uh, all MCDs uh, like uh, South Delhi, East Delhi and uh, North Delhi are, uh, have already placed many FSTC uh, uh, containers. And second approach is material recovery facility. The material recovery facility is to enhance the uh, segregation and uh, recycling of various uh, waste items, not only plastic. So these uh, uh, MRF facilities basically equipped with two kinds of uh, equipment. One is a segregation platform, and the second is the compactor baler, hydraulic baler, vertical hydraulic baler. So segregation uh, platform help uh, the waste collector to segregate uh, uh, waste uh, at very ease. I mean, so there will be no backache or because they have to uh, segregate uh, plastic or other waste uh, for for two three hours. So this uh, provide ease of doing business and the compactor uh, make the uh, waste in a compact form. Another way to cost save your cost on storage and transportation. Yeah. Because in waste management, logistic cost is the most critical factor. And because of high logistic costs, our recycling industries are away from the city. Uh, they are basically at the outskirt or uh, from uh, from other states like UP, Haryana, Punjab. Delhi is uh, having very less amount of recycling facility. So you need to transport your segregated waste to 100 kilometer distance or more than 100 kilometer distance. And uh, if you compact it at the source of collection or segregation, then uh, by compacting your waste, you will save at least two, three rupees per kg of yeah. logistic cost. And that, that two, three kg sense. will go to the waste collectors. You can uh, give more benefit to the waste collectors. So do, you think, do, you, do you think there is a scope of... Uh... Uh, improving the, uh, I mean, doing the trainings for the people who are on the compactors. Yes, sir. Uh, I mean, so should, there is should, shall we, shall we uh, try that? Uh, or, yeah, or, we can, or is it a very mechanical kind of a thing which do, do no, not... It's, a, it's, very, it's very simple. We just need to break the myth of uh, compactors. So, waste collectors think that if we install compactor, we will incur a lot of recurring costs like electricity and maintenance. And uh, they will have huge loss. So we, we need to break this myth uh, uh, through those training uh, compactor. We will talk about the capex. We will talk about the opex, and we will talk about the. No, net I was item. I was I was trying to ask if the person who is doing com compacting there, the yeah. the technician or the or the um, waste management uh, person, will he require any kind of a systematic training, or is it's okay? No, no. It's okay. Anybody can have this. Any anybody can. Uh, yeah, it's very simple. It's it's a simple. Somebody has installed that machine, so maybe the installation uh, people or the industry would have uh, would. Make yeah, yeah, the the manufacturer manufacturer give uh, give training. Uh, right. So uh, the manufacturer come for the installation, mm -hmm. and they guide uh, or uh, or. This is what we have, uh, what our role we can prepare a SOP to uh, run a uh, MRF. Mm -hmm. We can also provide additional training to the operator of MRF. Right. As a skill, India can also prepare a uh, SOP. But there is nothing very uh, means uh, very, extra, very complicated. Uh, 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 in, it's not required. Chale, Jain Saab, thank you so much. Uh, and in fact, uh, we'll be very uh, happy to meet we... you personally. Yeah, Dr. Thank you, sir. Dr. Yeah. yeah, there are, before I ask, uh, uh, hand it over to Dr. Hota. He wants to supplement this. There are two questions from Dr. Subra Das. She's from Amity University. And uh, one is about microplastics, how microplastics are going into the blood of human beings. 
and second is the minimum eligibility for the entrepreneurship program i think that you have already answered so yeah. kindly attend to this and then we can ask so now that. microplastic is another uh, area of uh, concern because uh, this uh, whatever plastic uh, we are disposing on different channel so maximum plastic uh, now uh, plastic waste uh, in oceans is a great uh, area of concern because uh, uh, the plastic in oceans undergo photo degradation and they convert into microplastic and uh, we all know the salt which we are consuming salt is very important ingredient of our foods and uh, uh, the iit kanpur i think have tested uh, uh, salt sample of all companies whether it is mncs or indian companies or local companies so all salt having composition of microplastics so salt mm -hmm. is a very salt is very um, uh common source of microplastic in human body so that's why it's very important to stop plastic uh, disposal in the oceans or water body thank you i'll uh, request dr hota kindly hello uh thank you uh, dr amish actually i just wanted to supplement uh, you know um, uh what dr jain says besides the when microplastic in the ocean besides the salt probably the food chain also plays a major role you know is uh, uh, plankton to fish to human so that cycle actually goes to the um, brings out the quantum of uh, microplastic being ingested by the uh, human uh, but what i am trying to um, say what dr saxena said rightly for entrepreneurship program i had a brief discussion uh, as if you may recollect um, we thought of doing some kind of a gap analysis center Um, yes. Life um, plastic waste um, management, right from the manufacturing to to the disposal. So, yeah. if we can do that, what actually Dr. Saxon has been rightly asking, and we have been thinking in SCGJ for a long time, that how can um, plastic waste management is a bigger canvas. So, let us take it bit by bit, by process by process. to do a kind of uh, entrepreneurship and uh, training program skilling program for that um, that reminds me when you said this uh, mrf facilities uh, i had a small discussion with the dij the other day um, they are actually uh, in some of the municipalities uh, the mrf facilities need some kind of as you said rightly the sop can be developed so that sop can be converted to a kind of a training program from uh skill development point of view so yeah. um, when we map this uh, gap analysis for the entrepreneurship program right from the manufacturing mm -hmm. to disposal perhaps uh, those things will uh, come up uh, very um, clearly and we can develop a skilling program for that and coming back to uh, i would suggest if we can tie up with um, uh, some kind of um, municipality which we are working in Mm, sun uh, this kind of uh, skilling as well um and then uh, for the major uh, satellite cities uh, of nrc in um, ncr delhi probably we can pick up also some of the resident welfare association where they now the ngt has already asked all the rwa can to cannot dispose the waste outside their premises they have to deal with that within that campus so this is an opportunity legally that we can pick up the rws also for um, develop some kind of sops how to uh, deal with this plastics if it yeah. sounds well i think so rwa to means uh, you rightly mentioned and it's very very uh, good opportunity because rwa now asked to have a facility to treat their organic waste also not only plastic yes yes, yes. so uh, what kind of technology uh, one can have what is the area required and what is the cost uh, requirement who are the vendors who mm. can uh, set up so all these information is needed by the rwa so we get we got numbers of calls uh, and queries uh, from rwa because uh, all municipalities in delhi and ncr issued letter to to uh, to rwa gated colony especially to mm. have the uh, to have their own system now rwa is uh, not a waste management agency or they are not the expert of this subject and uh, the municipalities are not providing any list of vendors or agencies who can help them so it's very difficult uh, for rwas uh, to 
to create uh, infrastructure uh, for treating their organic waste so, so we can, this will we be can, uh, this will be an opportunity for us to you know chip in in this to yes. develop sops and uh, work with rwa and uh, also we can ask that uh, that since that we have worked with the rwa municipalities can take a note of this and then uh, ask other rwas to replicate this yes thank you sir uh, i will have one one more minute i would take from you do you have a training facilities in your association yes, yes sir? sir yes sir okay okay so uh, and uh, are you associated or registered with uh, some organization or uh, are you are you a training institution or something like that uh, we are not a training institute we whatever we do we do at our own uh, and do you charge some uh, fee or uh, how do you how do you sustain uh, so we have number of uh, I mean, so number of verticals to sustain ourselves so we have different uh, business model Okay. Uh, through which we are generating revenue. Uh, okay. So we provide training on cost also. We provide training at uh, zero cost also, depending on the people who are getting training from us. Okay, fine. So I'm I'm sure uh, Daksha, uh, Dr. Dhamija, and Dr. Hota both. I think we should uh, we should explore this this area even more, and maybe sit together first of all uh, within ourselves. Uh, to see what best how best we can maybe make them one of the training affiliated training centers uh, for skill council for green jobs so that uh, systematic trainings can be imparted there and certifications can also come we have a process of certifying uh, the trained people on the qualifications so i i think we have a lot of possibility and opportunity to work together uh, not not for anybody's interest but in a general national interest as well and yes. obviously if it is a revenue model then then only it would works otherwise it will not work frankly speaking yes. so uh, i'm sure uh, all of us uh, agree uh, that we will come back to you uh, uh, taking more uh, help from you thank Over you so dr dhamija yes. for for the last word yeah last word and not the least so very grateful to you for your you know it was a very nice presentation we could learn a lot we could gain a lot and in fact we have we this is an area where we have been deliberating thinking that we should do more we are doing very little except for interacting with the you know plastic uh, members of the plastic association there was there were some meetings we held but we could not go beyond that and what today we have really discussed we would like to take it forward and come to some concrete action plan for skill council so once again thank you very much and uh, have a good day thank Great you time. thank you jain my sir. pleasure thank you, thank you thank you we would expect some information from you on the entrepreneurship uh, course definitely definitely and we yeah. should be in touch with you yeah yeah thank you so much thank, thank, you. thank you dr hota for bringing him on the board yeah thank yeah. you thank you thank you so much